Keep them there. <laughs> oh, God! oh my god! Jesus Christ, I'm gonna die! No, I can't! Oh my god! <laughs>
So, then how do you know about it? Seto seems to stand still, letting silence linger in the air. The room began to fall off as Seto stood in place. I had felt this feeling before, but I couldn't pin down where. Finally, Seto slowly turned his head to me, causing me to silently guess at what it was revealing. In his gold eyes were crosses, glowing a dark black, where his pupils were. Whoa. The feeling of feathers once again danced around me, causing me to squ quiver slightly. Does that answer your question? Ah, uh, pretty clearly, yes. I nodded slowly but frightfully. Seto was an angel? How? He looked like a demon. No one mentioned him being anything close to an angel other than ha him having holy magic. Did Diana not know either? How is this hidden? So, like, if you watch my other playthroughs of um, Seduce Me, it's more heavily mentioned in Sam's Root that Seto has white magic. And holy magic, I should say. And obviously demons don't have that kind of shit, so it's kind of random. And Sam was, like, asking, like, where the fuck did you get holy magic from? So, yeah. Seto's an angel. Seto closed his eyes and relaxed a bit as he pressed his lips in the fine line. I love my lady. I would follow her to the ends of the five worlds and if she did. demanded it of me. And he did. To see the man she was bound to wed here, locked by a destiny that would have taken my love away long ago. It's maddening. The longer he stays here, the more dangerous his destiny becomes. I've seen visions of what would come to pass if his destiny is fulfilled, and I will do everything to make sure that doesn't happen. I could see the jealousy in Esero's eyes once again. Something burned heavily in Esero's gaze and didn't fade away as he gripped his spirit in the white knuckle grip. My lady is a queen deserving of the world, not a harem girl for him to ravage in a cage. Yeah, it's true. Like James is not like that, but that that was the fate. Like the, this is usually the nightmare of us that we had about James. So again, I I really do think it's the demon lord, but whatever. Memories of the nightmare I had long ago flickered in my head. Diana had been in the cage beside me. Did Seto see the same thing? I didn't get the chance to ask. Seto relaxed a bit and glared, glanced at, and glared at me. I could feel a shiver raking up my spine as his words shook my core. Do not speak of what I am to anyone, or I will set your destiny to die at your husband's hand. Okay, Jesus Christ, Seto, you don't need to threaten me like that, my god. Without letting me reply, Seto turned and left the room, leaving me alone to observe what happened. I felt the air in the room slowly drift back to normal, I, but, I, I, but I felt nowhere close to it. How was this happening? Why was this happening? Everything began to clash in my head, causing me to frown heavily in confusion and stress. My thoughts were interrupted as the door opened again, revealing James. Love? Are oh shit. Right? Oh shit. James. I think, okay, like I said earlier, we shouldn't lie to him about this side of stuff, but I feel like we, we can't tell James about this. Anyway, I'm gonna kiss him. I couldn't control myself. I needed some relief from this entire situation, I, and I usually found it in James's embrace and against his lips. I stood from the bed and walked over to him, wrapping my arms around him and pulling him into a kiss. James was taken by surprise, gasped against my lips before wrapping his arms around my waist and kissing me back. I let my mind sink into the blank state as I was drowned myself in the kisses between us. However, I, part I knew partly why I was doing this, to give James energy. If energy is what he needed to fight this, then I was willing to feed it to him. James pulled away slightly and looking down at me. As he looked into my eyes, he stared in soft surprise and confusion. Love, is everything alright? Ah, oh, god damn it, what do I do? <laughs> Cause like, Seto has a point, yes, he has energy, but will this backfire at me or something? Like if I keep doing this? Oh, I feel like I need to kiss him again. Oh man, this is, I'm gonna fuck up. I didn't want to tell him what happened. I didn't want him to know what was going on in my mind. I simply needed to help him in the only way I could. I needed to not think about what was happening. I pulled him back in and kissed him that much harder, wrapping my, my hands behind his head and gripping him tightly. James didn't question me further and tightened his embrace around me, deepening the kiss. Our mouths battled in the dance of dominance with James winning and giving me the, his passion. I found myself growing weak in my knees with the kiss between us, but at the same time I was floating in the mental cloud nine. My mind knew that I could stop now. If he asked, I would come up I would come up with an excuse for my behavior, but I was slowly getting into the direction that I was taking James towards. As one of his hands slowly slid down my back and hooked itself under my leg behind my knee, I knew that this was my one w one chance to pull away before I let myself dive into the most needed sexual ride. Okay, um, like I'm all for smut, but I hope this doesn't backfire on me, so let's just go all the way. I needed him. There was no point in stopping now. 
and the sexy music plays. <laughs> I quickly, I quickly grasp, I grasp his shoulder and pulling him, walking his back towards the bed and eventually falling back over it, with him kneeling, with him kneeling between my legs. My mind became mightily frantic, shutting out the world, the war, the castle, and the de other demons. Everything from my mind. All I needed now was James and his embrace to take me away from the night that made me forget. James slowly pulled away. A soft pant escaped him as he stared down at me. His pupils were blown in pure love and lust, gazing down at me with a heavily stare. James, I need you right now. At the sight of James suddenly licking his lips, something in my core trembled. As his fingers slightly dragged themselves along my sides and gripped my waist, I felt myself melt into the matches beneath me. I had to unlock... <laughs> I I had to unlock the beast within James, and I was ready to take him. Screw the world for now. The night belonged to us and us alone. Allow me to indulge myself first. <laughs> Woo! Oh shit! All right. I felt a hint of confusion run along my mind before suddenly feeling James pull up my shirt and ease it up, causing me to lift my arms above my head. What I didn't expect was him trying to... Was him tying the shirt around? Whoa! Oh! 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 oh no! Oh my God! Oh, okay, I need to calm down. Oh my God! It's happening! <laughs> what I didn't expect was him tying the shirt around my wrist and pressing my hands near the bedpost. What? What? A deep chuckle echoed from Ch James's chest as he, as he brushed a hand through my hair, making me gaze up in my, at his eyes. He didn't have to enthrall me to make me weak for him, but his beautiful whiskey eyes began to glow a brilliant gold. My body began to warm and shudder and desire. Oh my god, it's happening! <laughs> I couldn't stop the moan from escaping my lips as James slowly knelt down and planted his lips on my neck, dragging his tongue over the <laughs> over my most sensitive spot and slightly nipping at it. I tilted my head to the side, giving him more space to work as he slowly began to ravage me. My neck slashly wrapped uh, around his waist, pulling him closer to me. But as I did, James in, in, in belly rolled his hips against mine, grinding his knee against mine, and focusing us to release the gases of the feeling. Jesus Christ. My God, James, wanna slow the fuck down? My God. <laughs> All I could think about was James touching me, holding me, kissing me, deviling, deviling deep into me. And <laughs> my mind was spinning in an endless wave of desire as I could barely control myself from pulling at the makeshift built... At the matrix bindings and, and arching my back against James's chest. James ran the pain in mind by moving his kisses uh, to my lips, passionately dancing his tongue around against mine in the battle of dominance. I want I was his to take, conceding defeat in the, his tango. I naturally tried to lower my arms back down to capture him between them, but James suddenly pulled away and forced my hands back above me, making me gasp and stare wide into James's dominant gaze. Keep them there. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna die! No, I can't! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy crap! Oh my god! Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't need to question him or con er, <laughs> I didn't need to question him or his command. I nodded, willingly obeying, despite knowing that his his teasing would be the end of my sanity for the night. A smirk of approval slowly grew in his lips before he, he came back down on me to capture my lips again. I can only grip the fabric of my shirt around my hands, fighting every urge to disobey James. As he traveled his mouth down my neck to my chest, licking and kissing over my skin, every part of me was exposed to James and became his to claim. Every touch he made on my body, every finger that traced along my skin, um, made me shudder in absolute delight. My feet dragged themselves along the back of James's leg, teasing him and trying to urge him to come closer. As he did, took a sweet time undoing my undoing my pants and sliding them off of me before removing his own, leaving a spare for each other. James barely hovered his lips over mine, staring deep into my eyes as our passion be our passion and I began to take off. Yeah, we're, I think it really fucking took off like ten minutes ago. <laughs> our carnal desire for each other took over, unrelenting as we moaned through the night together in a loving and passionate cres crescendo. I let everything go, tearing through the shirt, tearing through the shirt, and eventually dragging my nails along his back. Damn, Jesus! All right, it's just his paint, his between his scars and pants made me lick my lips in an almost sadistic manner. But feeling him slow and tease me as punishment reminded me of who was in charge. The only sound to accompany our love. Our loving pleas and moans with each other was the creaking of the bed and the echo of the voices. We didn't give a damn who heard. I, I bet you didn't. Jesus. The entire castle would know who we belonged to, each other. 
As we peeked together, the fixation of our love only intensified, driving us to kiss each other and ride through the afterglow of our sex together. James managed to close his eyes, staring down at me, both in exhaustion and in love, as he ran his hand through my hair. I could only stare back, love in, lost in his whiskey-colored eyes. I am so unbelievably blessed to call you my own. Ah, that's so sweet! But Jesus! <laughs> me too, James. Our love fueled each other like a raging fire. We were destined to be together. Fuck anyone who said anything otherwise. Yeah, fuck them. We went to bed that night in each other's arms, developed by the peaceful dark of the slumber. To my surprise, no nightmare came that night. That's good. I woke up that morning by myself alone in bed. James was nowhere to be found, and I had assumed that he was out training. We were getting closer and closer to the day where we were going to go into battle with the demon lord. So I made sense to, so it made sense for him to be on top of his training. However, I, could, I couldn't exactly stop the feeling of loneliness rush through me. I always wanted to, I at least wanted to see him, see him off, but I had to understand, this was, a, this was preparation for war. The reward was me going home, after all. I stretched and rubbed my neck, massaging out the tired sores from sleeping in, from sleeping in my body. Uh. Day 5 in the Demon World. Had it really been that long? I wanted to imagine like it was a vacation, but the situation was the polar opposite. The way, this week... This was a week away from normalcy, despite it being barely normal in the first place. Besides, I was marrying a demon. There was nothing normal about that. How much time has gone by in the human world? Were people worried about me by now? Questions plagued my mind for a brief moment before I let out a sigh of defeat. I guess I'll figure out when I get home, whenever that is. Don't worry, darling. Oh my god, You'll Diana, Jesus. <laughs> Alright, fucking knock next time, my god. I turned my head to see Diana by the door with a plate of warm pancakes. I would never figure out how Diana managed to make them, but staring at the plate made my mouth water. Something warm. Here. Diana walked over and handed me the plate and utensils, and utensils to eat with it. I didn't even ask to start eating. The first bite was heavenly and the expression on my face apparently made Diana chuckle. I'm glad you enjoy it. I blushed and swallowed the bite full in my mouth before looking up at Diana. Thanks. You're welcome. Diana chuckled as I continued to eat happily. As the thought of as the thought crossed my mind, I couldn't help but look up and observe Diana as I ate what as I ate what she made for me. Diana was really doing a lot to help me go home, and on top of that having to deal with the war. I could tell that she had her reasons for doing so, but it seemed like there was a lot of work she had to she had to do, and I felt sorry for her. Still, I was thankful that she was willing to help me leave this world for my own. Diana smiled a bit before looking away and sighing. What was on her mind? Dear May I ask you something? Huh? Sure. Don't ask about the angels. Don't ask about the angels. <laughs> what was Diana? What was Diana curious about? Diana turned her head to me and stared at a blank expression. I was a little concerned as to why I was there. I received such a stare, but I mentally shook it off. Have you truly dealt with the angel problem? I haven't heard any word from them since last night, so I assume you have. Mm. But I need to be sure. Hmm. I stared at her for a moment, taking in the question. I really wasn't sure how to answer this because it wasn't clear if we managed to get away with the angel's sight or not. They didn't invade my dreams. La they didn't invade my dreams last night. That was for sure. But that could be con considered taking care of the problem. I took a breath before going with my gut. Oh shit! Oh no! Oh god! Okay, I need to say fuck. Like, if I'm being completely real, I don't fucking know anything. So I'm gonna say that. I truly didn't know. All I knew is what Sarah told me. But I knew better than to tell Diana that just from what Seta warned me about. Diana's eyebrows furred, as she, but she nodded. I see. Diana, I'm sorry. I just, I don't want to lie to you, okay? <laughs> and you didn't, she didn't even fucking give us a chance to, like, answer her before when she asked James and I. So, like, it's not my fault. Diana stared at me, digging into my, digging into my gaze to try to find some sort of, uh, some sort of other answer in my eyes. However, I remained steadfast. I didn't want to worry her anymore if James and I could handle it on our own. According to Seto, we could. Diana sighed before turning to leave. All right. May today go smoothly. Thank you. Oh, dear. I noticed she left. I hope today would go smoothly as well. Another round of surprises would kill me. All right. Here we go with Faye again. As I walked to the Grand Hall to meet with Faye, to meet with, the, with them for training, my mind slowly began to trickle into the memories of the day before. What was up with the Diana and what was up with her aura? She seemed normal so far, but remembering the sight of her angry flames made me grow, made me a bit worried. What was she planning on doing and where was she going? I finally reached to the Grand Hall, seeing Faye holding a strangely woven basket of sorts, peeking from the top of the intricate looking bottle and, and faintly catching the and faintly catching some of the site's items wrapped in the green leaves. 
Were we going somewhere? I tilted my head and Faye walked towards them. What's the basket for? Well, we gotta have food if we're gonna go out today, right? Oh, huh? We're going out? I thought we had to train. However, the new look on Faye's face provided was not going to be about practicing anything. I want to take you somewhere outside the castle. We'll be in a safe place, I promise. Want to come? Okay, Faye, I'll trust you. But, you know. Warning about leaving the castle entered my mind, reminding me that Diana's heavily suggested- Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The day I had arrived in the demon world. Did I really want to leave the castle right now? Oh, shit. Oh, man. Like, I want to go with Faye because, like, they have taught us some, like, interesting stuff so far. But, like, <laughs> am I going to die if I go out there? I need to save again. God damn. Thinking about it, the week had been pretty stressful. Maybe it was time for a break. and A day wasn't going to hurt us, right? Right? Oh, God. I nodded with a smile, making Faye grin back at me before taking my hand and leading me out into the hall. They guided me through the castle front gates, and they released my hand to fly high into the Come air. Come on! I stood up with the open sky before taking a breath and nodded, jolted my hands towards the ground, and went up in the air. Faye cheered silently before flying over the, for the, over the forest, causing me to follow suit. The journey forward continued almost a hour, uh, for almost a half hour before we arrived at a large mountain cliffside. Faye landed on it and sat down the basket before opening a large sheet and draping over the sides of the cliff. This was indeed was a picnic. I landed on the, by the cloth before stepping over and sitting down, letting my feet dangle over the edge. We were pretty high up and the sight was gorgeous, but I was pretty sure that we were safe as long as we didn't do something stupid. Faye followed suit and sat near me, pulling up the basket of their goodies between our hips. They reached into the they reached into it and pulled out two small packages wrapped in large leaves and held them together with twine. Here, made it myself. Ah, oh, they're so sweet. Faye handed me one and began to open theirs up, allowing me to look down and observe what had been given. It was light, like a sandwich, so I expected it to be such. Unwrapping it was easy enough with a simple tug. As the leaf opened up, I stared what was inside. It was it was a sandwich-sized block of what looked like to be bread, prepared with little spots of green veggies and seeds on different kinds. I was intrigued by just looking at it. What is this? Good. <laughs> I stared at it a bit before breaking off a piece to taste it. It broke off rather easily, rather revealing a soft and steamy warm center. It became even more interesting to me as I lifted the piece to my lips and took a bite. I expected it to be somehow exotic or wild and crazy. I was completely incorrect. Bread. It tastes like bread. Fresh bread, but still bread. Cue that, like, have you seen that, like, commercial of, like, Oprah Winfrey going, I love bread. That's essentially, like, what I'm getting at. <laughs> I chewed a bit and swallowed, ex uh, accepting that my expectations were cruelly deceiving before, were cruelly deceived before looking to Faye to see them practically chow down on their bre bread block. They seemed to enjoy it a lot. Was I missing something? I took another bite and tasted it again. There was a bit more taste uh, the second time, as the taste of the seed popped into my taste bud, but it wasn't anything truly marvelous. Maybe it was enough for a demon. Faye finished their bread before grinning at me. Crumbs decorated their lips and cheeks before they licked it all away with their tongue. I took another bite of the bread before looking out to the forest before us. This is a pretty nice place. Yeah, this place is pretty nice. I come here and eat all the time. Aww. Really? Uh-huh. I really don't like the food they make at the castle, especially the stew. Blech. <laughs> I tilted my head, vaguely remember being off for the stew the day I came into this world. Was what was wrong with it? What what's wrong with the stew? Faye looked over at me and gasped. Their face slightly turned green despite the surprise of fear in their eyes. Y you didn't need it, did you? Well, no, but Faye let out a sigh of relief, placing their hands on their chest. What is it? Is it, is it what I think it is? Like the, the imp demons? That's what I thought it was, right? Now I was insanely curious. What was wrong with the stew? I turned to Faye and leaned in, catching their gaze, making them stare back at me. Faye, what's in the stew? Oh. Oh. Uh. Faye? Faye shut their eyes before covering their head, tilting them into themselves. It's imp! Pig fun imp! That's, that's gross, okay? I stared, taking it in. Pig fun imp? Then I remember the demon lord's henchman for the vision from the boys showed, the, the vision the boys showed me from when we, when we first met. The demon lord had a servant that looked like a pig fawn. According to Diana, the demon lord had imps, so the servant had to be one. On top of that, one apparently had stuck into the castle to electrocute Diana the, the first day I came. Did, did she kill him and stick him in the stew? Did I almost eat a demon? 
My stomach suddenly my stomach felt suddenly queasy as I covered my mouth and took a heavy breath of realization. I was now incredibly grateful that Diana had stopped me. I am so 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 sorry. I, at least you didn't eat it, right? I nodded, shaking out my nerves and calming down. Thank God I didn't eat it. Faye let out a sigh and leaning back into their arms, looking up at the sky above us. You know, for a human, you are pretty good with magic. I looked over at them and tilted my head. Where was this coming from? Faye, I only really know two spells. So? There are some demons who only know one spell. Aww. You know two! That's better than one, right? I was surprised, but I nodded. There were demons like that? Faye let out a sigh. There are all kinds of magic in the universe, you know? For you to master demon magic, let alone fairy magic, that's a really cool talent. I smiled, happy to know that I was being I was seen I was being seen as a talent. Something about hearing a demon telling me that I was talented when it wasn't my fiance made me feel really special. Faye reached between us and brought out a bottle, popping the cork and offering it to me. Want some? What is it? A brew from where I was born. Salak Fion. It's good, I promise. Is it alcohol? Okay, I'll just try. Again, I'm trusting Faye right now, so might as well. I, ge I gently took the bottle from Faye and lifted it to my lips, taking a sip of be taking a sip and being surprised at the taste. If it was alcohol, it definitely didn't taste like it. A gorgeous mix of berries and mineral water danced along my tongue, revealing a hint of spice I couldn't I couldn't recognize. It went down like water and spurred me to take a good swig before passing it back to Faye and wiping my lips. Wow, that's amazing! I know, right? Faye cheered before lifting it up and chugging it a good percent of it down. We shared the bottle, only limited to one th to that one bottle, and enjoyed the state of mind euphor the state of mild euphoria euphoria it gave us. As we sat back, we let out a sigh, tamely sigh. You know, something's wrong with Diana. Yeah, I figured that much was wrong with her. There it was. I looked over at Faye and to see them still gazing at the air, cheeks slightly pink from the from the drink they had, but they continued to speak naturally. I have this. Thing like, I can sense danger and stuff. And lately, Diana's been flaring up for me like no tomorrow. You know, like she's, she's, she's what? Like she's turning into the demon Ooh. lord or something. She's growing more um, quick to make angry. Maybe. So, so in in the other playthroughs of the other roots of the other boys, you run into the group of the the councils, like the guys or the guardians, whatever you want to call it, the guards. Um, they all think that Diana is turning into the Demon Lord just because she's been around violence so long, so they think that she will turn into, like, what the Demon Lord is, and they were planning to kill her. And each time I said no, because I always had Diana's back, but, like, it's interesting that Faye's the first one to bring it up to us before we run into everybody, so it's interesting. I could tell this was the reason why Faye needed to leave the castle. This concern was definitely one Faye needed to figure out, or at least they vent about, or to vent about. Diana seemed to be close to them. What do you think could have changed her? I don't know. I mean, she's always kind of been a, I guess, passionate person. You know, since she hates the demon lord and stuff. Uh-huh. But she's mostly been pretty nice and stuff until recently. Really? She was nice even when you met her? Really? Especially when I met her. I went to her after my entire clan was burned and, well... She kind of took me in and asked me to help her in the war. I was the first person besides for her guard to work with her. That was an interesting story. While it was said what happened to Faith's clan, they seemed to have been moved on. They seemed to have moved on and were okay with where they were. Faye tilted back and lunged back on the blanket. I've pretty much been there ever since the war started. I've never seen her get so angry and stuff. At least not to the point where she suddenly poof burst into flames so wait is this just recently since like the boys came back or what that does sound a bit odd i became concerned for diana too would she be okay she was leading a large rebellion against a murderous psychopath so it seemed to come with a job with a job but if Faye watched her and saw this change then what could have sparked it I shook my head and fell back on the sheet beneath us, staring into the open sky. I couldn't spend my time thinking about it. I was about to relax with the Faye, and they seemed to want to get off the topic now that I had now that they had said their piece. We relaxed there, chatting away at random talk at random topics, until it was time to head back, practice up a bit of what I knew, and separate for the night. Hopefully things would be settled soon. 
Woo, okay, so I'm gonna end the episode here. That was interesting. I appreciate the smut for this one. But yeah, so now I'm kinda of, I'm kinda of wondering, is it is the reason why Diana changed, is it just because that's when the boys came back? Because it seems like what Faye is saying, she was perfectly fine until like now, like recently. So I'm just speculating maybe it's because oh shit. There's the, the there's the people that fucked up my whole family and my whole world. So I think that's why she's so angry. I don't think it's just because she's turning into um, the demon lord. That's what I, I I don't think so. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of CDC, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And we'll see what happens in the next video because I'm hearing terrible music right now. So that means bad shit's about to happen. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Jesus, alright. <laughs> just see like an old woman coming out of the darkness, that would scare me. Alright, I gotta give her a stupid voice too. <clears throat> Mess!